Hello everyone, welcome to our network security course. My name is Cihangir Tezcan and uh, I'm an assistant professor at Middle East Technical University. I'm from the Department of Cybersecurity at Informatics Institute. So uh, our first lecture will be about block ciphers. Uh, the security in most of the protocols and algorithms in network is ba are based on uh, cryptographic algorithms. So uh, in this course, we start with some cryptographic algorithms, uh, some standards and why they are secure and how they can be secure. I mean, which parameters you should use and so on. So this is important to provide uh, security in the network. For this reason, we will briefly see these cryptographic algorithms and uh, the standards that we can use that we know that they are secure. So if you're more interested, you can also look at my applied cryptology course where we will go further into detail about cryptography. But here we will just see the main idea behind these cryptographic algorithms. So some people uh, don't mention these algorithms in network security courses. They just say that we ask cryptographers and they said that these algorithms are secure, so it is okay to use them. But without knowing what is inside the box, you know, you don't, you cannot say that it is secure uh, because almost all the time it will be like a magic to you. So for this reason, we have to see the fundamentals about cryptography. So we will start with block ciphers. So first I will give a brief introduction about cryptography. Then we will move on to block ciphers. I will pay attention to DES and triple DES algorithm and AES, which is the current standard actually. Then I will uh, finalize by talking about lightweight cryptography, which is very important with the advent of uh, Internet of Things. So let's start. I actually the slide says yesterday's news, but of course it is a, a year old because last year when I was teaching network security, this uh, happened just one day before our lecture, the first lecture. So I included this slide. So it was actually a breaking news. The link is here. I strongly suggest you to uh, read the whole thing to see why cryptography is really that important and how it can be uh, overthrown by uh, agencies. So I took a brief part from the, uh, this news. So let me read it just in a fast way and see uh, how uh, important crypto is because it is the, just the building block almost in all of the applications. So if, you, if the first block is not secure, then you cannot talk about security at all. So let me briefly read this uh, news. For more than half a century, governments all over the world trusted a single company to keep the communications of their spy soldiers and diplomats secret. The company, Crypto AG, got its first break with a contract to build code making machines for US troops during World War II. Flush with cash, it became a dominant maker of encryption devices for decades, navigating waves of technology from mechanical gears to electronic circuits, and finally, silicon chips and software. The Swiss firm made millions of dollars selling equipment to more than 120 countries well into the 21st century. Its clients included Iran, military juntas in Latin America, nuclear rivals India and Pakistan, and even the Vatican. But what none of these customers ever knew was that Crypto AG was secretly owned by the CIA in a highly classified partnership with West German intelligence. These spy agencies rigged the company's devices so they could easily break the codes that countries used to send encrypted messages. The decades-long arrangement among the most closely guarded secrets of the Cold War is laid bare in a classified, comprehensive CIA history of the operation obtained by the Washington Post and ZDF, a German public broadcaster, in a joint reporting project. So here are the uh, details of the news. Each year, the CIA and BND split any profits crypto had made, according to the German history, which says the BND handled the accounting and delivered the cash owed to CIA in an underground parking garage. So this is important. So we always thought that this happens in movies, but as you can see, even CIA goes to the underground parking park garage, garage to exchange cash. From the outset, the partnership was beset by petty disagreements and tensions. To CIA operatives, the BND often seemed preoccupied with turning a profit and the Americans constantly reminded the Germans that this was an intelligence operation, not a money-making enterprise. The Germans were taken aback by the Americans' willingness to spy on all but their closest allies with targets, including NATO members, 
in Spain, Greece, Turkey, and Italy. So this was the actually the part I wanted to mention. So please read the rest of the news and see why you cannot trust. Uh, I mean, uh, if you, in order to get the full security, you have to build each block by yourself. So buying some equipment from some company and assume that you are secure is not that good. Okay, this is why you have to know what is inside the box. So this is why uh, I want to uh, go into a little bit detail about cryptography in, the, in this course. Okay, so let's start with encoding. So the, throughout this course, we will be talking about networks. So devices will be talking to each other. So in order for them to communicate, first, they have to agree on a language. So this is done by encoding because historical ciphers mostly operate on letters since they are pen and paper methods. So in that case, you use the same language. But when working with digital data, we can represent letters, numbers, symbols, et cetera, as strings of bits. Thus, the communicating parties must first agree on an encoding. So ASCII table is the most famous one, which is the American uh, standard, but uh, this table does not contain Turkish, some of the Turkish characters. Also, some Latin languages have some letters that are not included in ASCII. So um, some Latin languages like Turkish uses UTF-8 or similar encoding. So in this course, we assume that each device or each party agreed on an encoding so they can understand what they are talking about. So here's a brief reminder, the encoding, uh, the ASCII table here. Uh, so when you're working with on crypto, you have to think in binary. So for us, everything's are, everything is zeros and ones. So it should be easy for you to turn an integer into hexadecimal or binary in any instance. So, but as a reminder, uh, in the ASCII table, the letters start with the, as the integer 65 and goes to here. Uh, some of the characters are not uh, printable on the screen. Uh, this would be somewhat important when we talk about password breaking. Okay. So just, but we first assume that everybody agreed on an encoding and we know the, the devices or the people using them understand each other. With that in mind, uh, I always try to draw a big picture about cryptography, but I always fail. So here's an incomplete big picture. Cryptography has a lot of areas like symmetric key cryptography, asymmetric key cryptography, hash functions, randomness, post-quantum cryptography, provable security, homomorphic encryption, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, it is a huge picture. But there are some uh, parts that are uh, more related to this course. and. Uh, this is what we will be trying to cover in this course. Okay, so here's an, another picture from, this is not drawn by me. Uh, here uh, we, uh, we are trying to show you which questions actually the cryptography solves. So the one of the most uh, obvious problem is confidentiality, <clears throat> or we can say privacy. So in cryptography, we assume that the channel we are communicating with is insecure. So we first agree on that the ch channel is insecure. So in all of the networks that we are going to talk about, it doesn't matter if you connect it with an Ethernet cable, if you are using Wi-Fi, if you are using GSM communication or RFID or anything, anybody can listen to the communication. And it is easier to listen to communication if the communication is wireless, right? Because anybody with an antenna that is close to the communicating parties can capture the data that goes on the, through air. So they know the they always listen. So we always assume that somebody is listening to the communication. But question is, can you still uh, communicate in a secure way in an insecure channel? The answer is yes, and crypto solved this problem years ago. You can solve this with, by using block ciphers or stream ciphers, or you can even use public key encryption, encryption algorithms like RSA or Algama. So, and more popular ones are authenticated encryption algorithms, which provides both encryption and authentication. So this problem is solved, and we will see a lot of examples during the first lecture. But crypto also solves other problems like data authentication. Uh, integrity of a data can be provided by hash functions. These are cryptographic hash functions. They have some more uh, properties than a, 
regular hash function. But uh, data authentication can also be provided by message authentication codes. So MAC in crypto is short for message authentication code, uh, not like uh, media access control, in a, which is uh, common in network courses. So this is message authentication code and A AE is short for authenticated encryption. So you can provide data authentication like this. You can also provide entity authentication by digital signatures or zero knowledge proofs or MAC algorithms. And finally, you can provide origin non-repudiation by digital signatures. So when somebody signs something, we knew that uh, we know that that is signed by the person that uh, because he is, they are the only person who can sign it. And so, so they cannot then uh, deny that they signed it. So this is solved by digital signatures. So my aim is to mention all of these algorithms and standards in the first few weeks of this course uh, in a very brief way. Again, if you are more interested, you can look further into other courses about cryptology and uh, see uh, why they are designed in that way and why they are secure or if you are allowed to choose some parameters or uh, like mode of operations etc which ones are uh, secure and why you can see that in my applied cryptology course so let's look at that picture uh, and try to classify them and we can actually divide cryptographic algorithms into two as keyless uh, algorithms and keyed algorithms Keyless algorithms, most uh, obvious one is cryptographic hash functions. And in the key setting, we have symmetric key algorithms and asymmetric key algorithms. If you look at the symmetric key algorithms, here we use the same key material for both encryption and decryption if this is an encryption algorithm. This is why we have the name symmetric key cryptography. There are actually four types of algorithms in this category. Uh, block ciphers and stream ciphers are the most famous ones for encryption. And uh, I added this because in the latest uh, advancements in the crypto actually forced me to put it here because sponge constructions, uh, which are famous for the last 10 years, I guess, could be even 15, maybe. So they're actually different than block ciphers and stream ciphers and current uh, good algorithms or uh, winner of some competitions are based on sponge constructions. You can also look at them as permutation-based cryptography. Uh, we will see some examples throughout the course, uh, but they are also an encrypt can be used as an encryption algorithm. The fourth one in this uh, list is not an encryption algorithm, but it is a message authentication code. It sometimes you can see it as a cryptographic hash function that uses a key. Uh, it wouldn't be a that bad definition. So we will try to see all of these algorithms and uh, see what kind of standards we have. And for standards, I mean, I will be mostly focused on ISO standards, which are international standards and American standards that are coming from NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology. So uh, for the symmetric key crypto systems, block ciphers, stream ciphers, and sponge constructions are encryption primitives, while the message authentication codes are used for data and data origin authentication. We can, but all of these topics are not completely uh, um, unrelated topics. They can, they are actually related. And in order to understand one of them, you have to know all of them. Because, for instance, we can use a block cipher to build a stream cipher by changing the mode of operation, for instance, or by changing the design. Or we can even build a message authentication code or a hash function by using a block cipher. So uh, in order to understand fully these topics, you have to also know the others so that uh, you understand the, or see the big picture. Asymmetric key crypto systems are somewhat different. There are different types of algorithms in asymmetric key cryptography. They include key agreement algorithms, public key encryption algorithms, and digital signature algorithms. Uh, key agreement algorithms like Diffie-Hellman is Diffie-Hellman key exchange is very important, which we use uh, constantly during internet communications. So we will see in this lecture how it works and why it is secure and so on. But we first start with uh, symmetric key encryption algorithms, and we will see 
uh, what a block cipher is. So let's first give some definitions and talk about what is a crypto system or a cipher. Uh, plain text is what you want to protect. Okay, so plain text can be a data on your hard drive, it can be an SMS message, it can be a WhatsApp message, or it might be your voice when you are talking through a GSM communication. So it is the thing that you want to protect. Uh, a crypto system is a pair of algorithms that convert plain text to cipher text and back. So it is a pair of encryption and decryption algorithms. Cipher text is the encrypted version of the plain text and cipher text should appear like a random sequence. In other words, it shouldn't leak any information about the plain text. So you have the plain text, you have the encryption algorithm, most probably use, use a secret key to perform this encryption operation. So you obtain the cipher text, which looks like a random sequence, and you send this cipher text to the communication channel you are using, which we assume that insecure, but you don't mind because anybody who captures the cipher text without the secret key, they would not know anything about the plain text. But when it reaches to the person that you want to communicate, they decrypt this uh, cipher text again using the same key material if you are using symmetric key crypto, then obtain the plain text uh, in a correct way. But of course, uh, we have to think further and we, even if anybody capturing the cipher text, we assume that they won't be able to convert it into back to plain text. But if they have control over the channel, they may remove some bits or modify some bits while you are sending the data. So here you have to also check the integrity. So this is why we have authenticated encryption algorithms or message authentication codes and so on. This is why it is important uh, to know all of these uh, cryptographic algorithms. So if we focus on the symmetric key crypto system, here we are using the same key material for both encryption and decryption. They don't have to be the same, but we assume that one of them can be obtained from the other. So if you know the encryption key, just making small changes, uh, you, have, you can obtain the decryption key. In other words, one can be obtained from the other one in polynomial time. If you know complex theory, you know what I mean. If you don't, that is not uh, that important. Just assume that knowing one uh, gives you the other one. This is important because in public key cryptography, we will have two different keys one for encryption and one for decryption. And for encryption, we will call it the public key. And for the decryption, we will call it the private key. And the good thing will be that knowing the public key would not allow you to capture the private key. So this is uh, why I said that you can obtain the other one in polynomial time here, but you won't be able to capture that in the asymmetric key cryptography. So this is how symmetric key encryption algorithm works. If you are using block ciphers, uh, stream ciphers, or algorithms like sponge constructions, uh, the idea is as follows. You use the same key material for both encryption and decryption. 